Hello, welcome to my doll customizing journey. My name is Josephine and these are my creatures. I was so happy with my Oceana doll that I decided to do a couple more. Honestly, I think I went a little bit hashtag mermaid crazy because I ended up with four dolls. If someone doesn't know what is mermaid exactly, let me explain. Mermaid is a challenge where artists paint, draw or sculpt mermaids in the month of May. Hence the name mermaid. I'm gonna start with cutting off all the hair real close to the doll's head. I take my pure acetone and q-tips and melt their faces off. <laughs> no, not really, it just removes the factory paint so that we have a surface to work with. I wipe the faces with a damp cloth to make them clean. The next step is to boil water, so off to the kitchen we go. Pour the water to a container that can take the heat and is large enough. Then put the dolls head first into the water. You want the head to soak in the water for a couple of minutes. So, while you wait, make yourself a nice cup of tea. And because plain tea is a bit boring on its own, fix that with a slice of pie on the side. And because pie tastes 10 times better with ice cream, scoop on vanilla ice cream and a spoon to devour everything with. And by the time you have eaten all of that, the heads should be nice and squishy. Then take a towel and pull the heads off one by one. Now let's remove the rest of the hair. Going from the neck hole and scrape around with a needle nose plier or tweezers. Pull out the leftover gunk from the neck hole. I paint the scalp to match the new hair. In hindsight, this was not needed and the acrylic paint kind of made it difficult for the glue to grip onto. Now is a good time to remove Rochelle's ears. I bought these ready-made doll hair wefts from eBay, but I wanted the hairline to still be rebooted. So I cut off tiny sections and loop them across my finger and slide in my rerouting tool, which is an X-Acto knife handle and a regular needle cut in an angle, then I plug in the hairline one tiny hole at a time. I secure the hairs from inside with some glue. I fill the rest of the head with glued on wefts. I place them according to the hairstyle I'm going for. I repeat those steps, rerouting, securing with glue and gluing on the wefts onto the rest of the dolls. I comb the hair to make the curls in the wefts lay nicely. I style the doll's hair with braids and tiny rubber bands. I love how the tips of the hair almost looks like sea foam to me. I protect the doll's hair with pins and scraps of fabric. Then I spray the heads with MSC or Mr. Super Clear. 
it preps the surface and gives it a paper-like texture. That way we can use pencils to draw on the new face. I start the face up with soft pastels. All the materials are listed in the description box. Also in the description box is a link to my Etsy shop you, where you can purchase these dolls. I would be so happy to sell these dolls because I want to invest the money back into my channel. I have my eyes on a ring light. But if you can't buy anything, please subscribe to my channel. That helps out a lot too. I blush the doll's forehead, I add eyeshadow and blush the cheeks too. I contour the cheeks with a darker blue. I add pink pastel to her lips but in the end it gets covered with a darker color. I do this to all of the girls and seal them second time with MSC. Then I take a very sharp, cool toned grey watercolour pencil and start drawing in the eye shape. I add a couple of wrinkles to the eyelids for detail. I flip the doll upside down to get a better angle when I draw the left side of the face. I'm right handed so this trick helps me out a lot. I darken the nostrils and corners of the mouth for added dimension. <laughs> then it's time to fill in the iris. I decided to go with only an iris in the eye without a pupil because I have plans to fill the eye with glitter later on, so this is just a base colour. The paint I used for the irises and for the lips is actually the watery pigment lifted up straight from the pencil. I use a Derwent Inktense pencils and for me, if I want a very vibrant colour, I need to wet the pigment. The next step is to fill in the whites of the eyes and to paint on the waterline. For this, I use acrylic paint. Then it's time to seal the dolls for the third time. For this layer, I just darken everything. The lips, the eye creases and the eyeliner. I also detail the eyebrows a little bit.
I also shade the eyeballs to make them look more rounded and I think this is a very very crucial step at making your eyes look very realistic. Then is the fun part, the scales. For painting the scales, I use regular watercolor and not pencils. I dab on random spots in different sizes and shapes. The general rule of thumb here is, the more random it looks, the better. I use three different colors for fun variation. Then I take a Q-tip and lift off some of the pigment before it is completely dry. I think it makes them look more like scales than, and less like spots. While I have the light color mixed, I add some highlights on her lids, Cupid's bow and the core, inner corner of the eye. You can erase the pencils and watercolor with a Q-tip. Then again I repeat that to all of the dolls and seal my work in. Then it's time to unmummify them. <laughs> It's time to add some glitter. As I said earlier, I want the eyes to be super sparkly. I brush on some white craft glue and sprinkle on the glitter. I also give the girls a glittery cut crease on their eyelids. I add teeny tiny white dots as the catch lights in the eyes. I glaze the eyes to make the glare pop out even more. I also glaze the lips. Now it's time to add the eyelashes. I paint on a thin amount of blue and add the eyelashes in sections to give them more volume.
lashes, need a little trim, and after that, the face up is done. Let's move on to the body, shall we? First, I sand off all the seams and factory markings. The girls are going to be wearing some bikinis, so seams are not allowed. For this task, I use a Dremel tool, courtesy of my boyfriend. Thank you, sweetie. But for real, I really love this tool, maybe more than my boyfriend. Sorry, sweetie. Finishing the sanding off with a finer grid sanding paper. Don't forget the foots! I clean off all the dust from the bodies. We want a clean surface to spray the MSC on. Next, I put on my mask and go outside to spray them with MSC. After prepping the bodies with the sealant, I start blushing them. I blush the joints and the contours of the body. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Next, I fill in the holes on Rochelle's body with Magic Sculpt. Then I do the same scaly texture to the body. I try to group the scales into specific areas instead of putting them all over the body. This way, it creates more visual interest when there is a negative space between the groups of scales. I decorate the body with more glitter. There is no such thing as too much glitter. So pop off the cap and pour in all of it. <laughs> then it's time to put the heads back on. I will be going through making of the things very quickly here, it's just jewellery wire bent to a shape you want. Then I use Angelina film to sandwich the wire and I melt the film to itself encasing the wire with my iron. I use a medium heat for this. Then it's just a matter of cutting the pieces out and sealing the edge with the heat from a candle. Be very careful if you work with fire or warm things or hot things. I don't want anyone to burn themselves. I also hover it in the heat of the candle to get the plastic to tighten. If you want a more detailed tutorial on this, please let me know in the comments down below. I would be happy to do it. I attach the fins by drilling holes to the body and gluing them in with a two-part epoxy glue. The glue is pink because I mixed in a little bit of glitter to make it look nicer. 
I also wanted to give all of my dolls webbed hands and not just Laguna. For this, I tried out nail polish and it worked so well. I brush on the polish from the palm side of the hand. I do multiple layers of this and let the layers dry in between coats. I clean up the edges with acetone, but do be careful not to overdo this step because too much rubbing can cause the plastic on the hands to start peeling off. I do the girls' outfits off camera and now they are all done, yay! I have decided to name them Nereida, Ava, Naya and Arista. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe if you haven't yet done that, like this video and leave a comment, I would love to know what you think of them. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Josephine's Creatures and lastly all four of these dolls are for sale on my Etsy shop, I will leave a link in the description box. Until next time, bye!